I've gone ahead and getting ready to get the motor coupled with the transmission. I've bolted on the bell housing. I've removed the original clutch assembly that was here um, that was holding the throw-out bearing um, to re reduce weight before I bolted it on. And uh, I've already shortened, foreshortened this by about, I think it was about a half an inch, and this by about an inch. I didn't change the size of the splines, the length of the splines at all, so the amount of contact is the same as it was. So I just changed the extra pieces of casting that were on the edges of it um, that made it a little easier to put it together. So um, now it will actually fit together. This plate will almost touch this plate, um, which is perfect. So what I need to do now, I've already, this is the gasket that came with this, it was on this. I've already marked about in the center, if you can see my pencil marks, this plate, this big thick piece of aluminum. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and drill the center hole first with a four and a half inch um, hole saw. Not a cheap hole saw by any means. They were really expensive. It was like over $40 for one single hole saw for a bimetal. And uh, then I'll drill these mounting holes once I've, I'm sure that, that I like where this is. And then I'll bolt that to the, to the motor housing so I'll have another half inch thick plate here of aluminum, which is this one. And then I'm going to actually set the shaft together. I'm going to put the shaft into this one with the plate mounted to it. Put Stand this up on its back so there's no weight left or right. And, uh, and that, that's how I'm going to center it. Um, I can't really think of a better way to do it. And then I'll drill, drill my holes from this into the, this plate and I'll drill them a little loose so I'll have a little adjustment so I can tweak with it once I get the motor spinning and the transmission and then see where we're at. Okay, so the plate's all drilled. Pretty happy with the placement of the holes. Got a, one that's just a little off, but that's no big deal. I can drill it out just a little bigger. Uh, I've got plenty of meat to not worry about it. And this is actually a little big anyway. So I'm going to get it assembled with the motor. Uh, put the plate in the way that I... I've got to turn, spin the, this plate 180 degrees, I think, to get the contacts where I want them. And then uh, bolt it up and try to set it in. And now I'm going to line up this transmission and see how it fits. So one of my bolts here is actually right on the money with one of the motor bolts. Which means if I take that out, actually two of them are. That's kind of crazy. If I take these two bolts out, this might actually bolt up exactly in plane. Let's find out. So every once in a while in life, I have these moments of synchronicity. And this one, I think, is a pretty incredible one. The two flange bolts for the motor, exactly in plane with the center shaft of the bell housing and this electric motor, not this plate, but the electric motor itself, the two bottom shaft, bottom holes in that plate are exactly, I mean, it's, I, I, there's no way I could have predicted that, exactly in the same position. And the thing spins like a dream exactly in the same position that to me is quite incredible um, so I've got this situation is going to be just perfect I have enough play in the shaft I, all I'm going to do is drill the two holes up here and, and it's done other than cutting down the aluminum to um, cut down on weight got all the holes drilled now I'm just cutting this out started with the um, reciprocating saw, moved on to the sawzall. Now I'm at the grinder. Uh, it does not grind all that well, but it's the fastest way I can get it done. This plate's so thick it's hard to cut. After two hours of work or so, this is what you get. It's a nice clean looking aluminum plate. Um, 
ready to be bolted up. I took a file to the edges afterward after I ground them. Take off any sharp edges. Deburred all the holes just to make it a little more friendly. Bolt it up. Here we go. All right, so bolted together, I used some Loctite on the threads that hold the uh, pulley assembly to the motor side. This is obviously just friction fit on here. I'll probably grease this before um, before I put it on the road. I need to tear apart this transmission because it actually doesn't have very much liquid in it at all, and it actually had some water in it. So I I got to open this up and clean it up. But I wanted to show you what it sounds like running. Vibration factor is near minimum. It's got a pretty good sound to it. It's cranking. Counterclockwise fashion right now. So, not bad. Gotta get it bolted up, mounted, and see how it looks in the car. I might want to support the back end of the motor from inside it. I'm gonna go ahead and get this one put into place so I can figure out where my bracket needs to go to support the heavy end of the motor. So the motor's mounted, but the back end of it is sitting up on blocks. Without the shaft in, it's got it's all over the place. It's very loose, so there needs to be support on this end. There are no bolts in the um, in this end of the motor. There are no no threaded sections where I can put bolts in or anything. I could tap and thread it, um, but short of doing that, I left myself some extra space on the bottom of this flange, which is about you know halfway between the bolts and the end of the motor. So what I can do is run a piece of angle iron right from here. To here, drill a couple of holes and bolt it right into this. Um, I don't know how well you can see that? Bolt it right into the plate right here on both sides, bolt on either side. As you can see here, I've got a piece of angle iron going across, through bolted into this flange, the flange that I made, both sides. Um, all I got to do now is get it in its relative position that I want it, which it pretty much is right now and uh, tack weld check for fit, make sure there's no anything binding and then weld it both sides of the angle iron, trim the end alright so here we are just got it primed where I welded the bracket in uh, hooked it up and actually changed the orientation so it'll spin forward direction, I'm going to hook up the battery Vibration. It's got a little vibration to it, um, a little more than I like. It did not have vibration very much at all until I installed the drive line right in here. So I'm going to see if I can shim one of these sides and figure out exactly where the where the vibration is coming from. I mean, it could be just transferring through the frame. Maybe it's just being amplified, a vibration that was already there. Um, I can try to look at my union again and make sure it's spot on. Last time I knew it had basically zero vibration. Um, so I, I'm going to have to look into all the variables here and just find the spot and uh, try to eliminate it somehow. Um, but uh, otherwise, it's good to go. Uh, and really, it could be driven the way it is. It just would be a little nerve-wracking and um, might be hard on the motor. So, uh, there again, if you like what you see, subscribe, rate, comment, all those good things. Tell your friends. Stay tuned. Plenty more to come.